Hey everyone, Matt here. I wanted to start a new series on this channel. Uh, this is where I'm gonna go through doing uh, budget reviews and budget critiques. I've been doing this probably for the last, I mean, I've been budgeting and everything for the last nine years or so, and I've been doing this whole budget reviews for um, probably the last several years uh, on and off. So I have an actual, the last budget that I ever reviewed uh, this was back in the er, uh, the beginning of this year, and I'm going to present that uh, here and kind of do a budget review of what I did back then. So without further ado, let's get started on this one. All right, so here we are at the uh, the actual budget, and so as you can see, there's just um, we have some income up here, right here at forty three ninety. This is the actual take home net income for this particular family. I uh, have a list of all of the regular expenses for the month. And then down here I have all of the debts uh, that are paid. So one of the things I will usually like to do to start off is, first of all, give some context that this is um, this is two adults. All right. Uh, and there's one child. And if I remember correctly on this one, they lived, I believe, in the Midwest, the U.S., and they are currently on BS, Baby Step 2. So they already have a $1,000 emergency fund saved up, and they are currently working on paying off all their debts. And if you'll notice down here on the debts, these are all listed smallest to largest, so it already is in the Snowball uh, format. One of the things I like to do is kind of go through all the different categories of expenses so I kind of know what is here and what may not be here and I'll make some notes maybe down here. So the first thing I'm seeing is we have rent, groceries, electric, gas. Okay, so all these, these are what I call um, like category ones or E1s, these are your four walls. So four walls would be your housing expenses, your food, your uh, any kind of utilities that specifically are meant to keep the house running. So that would be your water, your gas, your electric, that kind of stuff. And then also your transportation. So this would be like gasoline, or maybe it might be a bus pass or Uber. Now the next are what I would consider like category two type expenses. And those would be things like uh, just basic bills. So we're talking phone, we're talking cable, we're talking you know, yeah, yeah, basic uh, entertainment, that kind of stuff. And looking actually at all of these, to be totally honest, all of these are actually that exact kind of, those are all category two expenses. All right, in, in other words, they're, they're important, like Verizon and probably DirecTV, if you didn't pay them, that would go on your credit report as a negative. So they're important that you need to pay them every month, but they're not as important as these. Now, this kind of brings me to my first big kind of major point that I'm seeing in this. And that is that there aren't any what I call category threes or sinking funds. And sinking funds are funds where you put money away every month for a certain goal, for, for a certain bill that's going to be coming up in, say, the next three, four, five, six months, whatever, or even a year down the road. And this is a common uh, issue that I find with a lot of these, uh, with a lot of budgets. There's a lot of things that are missing because a lot of times people just think, oh, it's just, well, what are my monthly expenses? Um, but they don't realize that, oh, I forgot about, you know, the homeowner's insurance, or I forgot about I have licenses and registration on my car. So, um, but for right now, let's just take a look at what we have going on here. So, we're missing some uh, sinking funds. We'll get back to that. And finally, here are what I would call the E4s. These are your debt payments, and there's a total for that down there. So, start off. Let's do, let's take, all right, let's do this. So, uh, total income. Let's move this over here. We have total income. 
and that's going to basically be well, that's that. All right. All right. Total expenses over this is our normal expenses that we have here with this plus all of the debt expenses. So that gives us that. So that means our cash flow is that minus that. 268, so that's how much money we have left over after all the bills are paid. Okay, not a whole lot, but now a couple of notes I wanna make down here. Um, I'll just put it down here on the say a little notes section. There's no uh, sinking funds. We need to fix that. So that means that this cash flow number right here is probably going to be a little bit less than what we're actually seeing because there's some expenses that we're not accounting for. So going along with that line, there are uh, there's four main insurances. Let's just call them the four insurances. That would be health, auto, home, and disability. There's also uh, some optional ones. There's uh, ID theft and possibly term life or just life insurance. The Now, here's the thing. Health insurance and disability might be covered in the, the income right here. So I'll go ahead and assume that that's where they're coming from. I don't remember the exact specifics on this particular budget. Um, but some of the things I am seeing, so I see things like rent. One of the sinking funds that I'm not seeing is renter's insurance. Uh, I'm seeing gasoline and State Farm. State Farm is, I think that was auto. So I'm seeing these two, that tells me there's a car. So if there's a car, that means we need and let's say that let's say State Farm is our auto insurance, so that takes care of that. But that means we need what I would call a car fund. That's for repairs and maintenance. Uh, additionally, so this car fund is really designed to take care of your tire, your tire rotations, your oil changes, your scheduled maintenance. Additionally, it's also got to take care of your unscheduled maintenance. So you have a tire that blows out, or you have um, a, a leaky brake system or something like that, that or, you know, or something breaks, that needs to get taken care of by the car fund. So we need to have that as well. Additionally, with the car fund, or not with the car fund, but with the car, we have um, license and registration. So the DMV will want to make sure that they get their, uh, their checks every year. So I need to see that. Well, let's see. And likewise, let's say this said rent, uh, not rent, <laughs> let's say this said um, a mortgage. Well, mortgage sinking funds include things such as, obviously, you have homeowner's insurance, your repairs and maintenance for that. So if a doorknob gets loose, you know, or you need to, you know, fix, fix a, a, a toilet, all right? You also have what are called CapEx. These are capital expenditures. These are the big ones. So things like Saving for a roof or a septic system or you have to replace a hot water heater or something like that. You add taxes, HOA fees, if that if that's applicable, PMI, your mortgage insurance, if if that's applicable. So there's a lot more sinking funds when you have a house, all right, than with just with rent. Uh, another one that I'm not seeing is what I call is just a holiday club or like a holiday kind of gift giving kind of thing. So this would be your Mother's Day, Father's Day, anniversaries, birthdays, Christmas, uh, all those kind of things. That's all scheduled. You know when those are coming. So there you need to be putting money aside for those particular uh, holidays. Another thing I'm noticing was school. Where is it? Schooling. So we have we have our child and we have um, schooling every month that we have to pay. So that's going to tell me, and I think this. This kid was either in like kindergarten or did like the early grades, like one through three or something like that. So that's going to tell me 
we have school supplies. Additionally, with the school supplies, there very well might also be sports supplies or extracurricular activity supplies. That would include things like uniforms, if that's something. Um, if they're playing uh, in a certain kind of sports, there might be um, uh, safety equipment. All right, shin guards, helmets, that kind of stuff. So we need to take care of that as well. These are all, again, I call these sinking funds. They're all green. These things need to show up in here somewhere. Oh, another thing that I'm not noticing. Um, housing supplies. All right. So, and what I mean by housing, this would be two. Uh, so these are things like, you know, you have like, you know, laundry, you know, the, you know, detergent or something like that. Oops. Uh, you have things like laundry detergent, um, soaps, I don't know, toothpaste, toilet paper, paper towels, blah, 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 whatever. Now, some folks like to put this into their groceries. Now, given that there's 200 in here for groceries, this is per month, I'm willing to bet that housing is not being not coming out of that. So, the, 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 my per, I personally, I have this as a separate category, so this way I know when we go out, because we'll go out and do shopping at Costco, um, and I'll put $50, I'll make sure that there's at least $50 per month in here. I don't do $50 per month, but I will add, make sure that the, uh, the limit is at least $50 per month. Um, so if we only use $30 that month, I'll refill it to $30, so it stays at $50. But I like to have a separate... Uh, account for this, but again, it's every month. I make sure that it's every month, not every. There's not a a time frame for that. Now, something else I'm not noticing is internet. Um, I got to make sure you have internet. Are there? I see. Um, I see things like Netflix and fitness. Um, but I'm looking at. Any other um, like memberships, uh, such as I'm thinking like Am oops, Amazon or Costco, and these two. Are, uh, the other thing I'm noticing is the gasoline is pretty high. That very well might be. This and usually what I'll do is I'll I'll talk with the people and, and find out okay you know why is this as high as it is because um, it very well might be that you have two people that drive for a living or they might need to do a lot of uh, travel for work so that might explain something like that but normally that's that's pretty high even if I assume two cars which I'm kind of which 117 per month is a kind of is a little bit pricey but I'm assuming that's covering two cars and um, some folks like to budget for this separately, but that's um, eating out. I don't know if that's something that they're doing. Uh, I like to personally have just food. And so this, instead of it being grocery, would actually say food on it. So any kind of thing that we buy that we eat comes out of the food category. But um, I just want to make sure that we're not missing anything out and missing anything in here. I'm going to go ahead and see if there is a way to lower this by 100 bucks. If we can, and I'm going to try to do that. So let's see if we can't get down to 300. And I'll do, and I'll, I'll what I'll do here is I'll say this is um, our original amount. We'll say that this was originally 400, just so I can keep track. Let's see, Verizon. I'm going to leave this here, but I'm going to make a note to search other providers. See what you can get if you can negotiate a better deal with Verizon. Uh, just every now and then, it's just generally a good idea to shop around and see if there's another option out there. All right, clothing, 30 bucks a month. Given the fact that we have 57 grand 
of debt that's eating up $1,158 uh, per month in cash flow. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to say no, no more of this. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this to a sinking fund. And I'm going to make it uh, kid only. And we are going to change this to $10. So what's going to happen now is we're going to put $10 a month. And this is going to build up and build up and build up. And then when it's time to go shopping like we needed down here, where was it? Schools, well, school and kind of sports supplies. That's all for the, you know, that's all kid stuff. We'll be able to do that. Okay, this was originally 30. Anytime fitness, mm, no. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. 38.44. Um, the reason is, again, we're at 57 grand. Uh, we don't need to be spending $38 a month on going out to exercise. Uh, run around the block, do some push-ups at home for now. Let's see. Okay, so this is something that I want to bring up right here, and that's we have Netflix and DirecTV. So these two things are what I call redundant expenditures, and what that means is they provide the same value, just maybe in different ways. So this is really just kind of, you know, sit at home, veg out on the TV entertainment kind of stuff. And they're doing the same thing. So this means that you're kind of paying for more or you're, you're paying extra for the, essentially the same, the same kind of entertainment. So for DirecTV, um, we're going to try to re eliminate these redundant expenditures. And I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this. So that's 6117. Again, this is not permanent. I'm not saying that this has to be the case entirely, but we're doing this just so that this way we're stuck with just, we have just Netflix. Now, what you could do if you wanted is, let's say, you know, you could do Netflix and then say one month you turn Netflix off and then you turn on HBO. And then the next month you turn off HBO and you turn on Hulu. And then after that you turn off Hulu and you go back to Netflix. Okay. This way you're kind of, you're just paying one membership each single time, but you're only using one streaming service. That eliminates those redundancies because the odds are you're probably not really getting your money's worth on DirecTV and Netflix. I mean, are you really, you know, this way you get to focus all of your entertainment on one streaming service and enjoy that as much as you can. And then if you want to do something else, you can move on after that. All right, or you can just keep it if you like. But I'm going to go ahead and do this just for now. Uh, State Farm. Again, I'm going to leave this as it is, but I'm going to make a note to shop around. See if you can't get that lower. And here's the other thing, with especially with, with insurances. A lot of insurances will allow you, will actually lower your monthly, well, they'll lower it by allowing you to pay over time. So that's why I mentioned down here, there's four these insurances down here. All of these insurances, if you look up here, most likely they'd be willing to reduce the, uh, the monthly expense if you paid every six months or you paid in advance. All right, for my auto insurance, I pay every six months. I My ins auto insurance is due in June and in December. But because of that, it actually is cheaper. It's like, I think about 100 bucks or whatever cheaper than if I had paid month to month. Same thing with um, probably uh, my, my renter. I think my renter's insurance does the same thing as well. So I'm actually able to have a lower bill because I pay every year as opposed to paying every month. So again, shop around for the State Farm. I'm looking at a date night right here, and I agree that as a couple, you should have a date night. But then I'm looking at this at this personal right here, and in all honesty, see that's fifty. That's seventy five for personal. All right. I agree that there should be some kind of personal spending, but I think this is a little bit much on this account. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go 20 and 20. And 20. So this was originally 25. And this was originally 50. 
right? Drop that down. And for entertain, let's see. See, and here's the other thing. I see entertainment and I see date night. 90 for entertainment per month is a bit much. Again, we have 50 grand in debt. Let's combine these actually. So for date night, I'm just gonna say zero for now, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you can't use it for that. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn entertainment into let's just try this 45. Uh not 250. This was originally 40. And I want to try to combine this. I understand the value. I mean, I do get that this is important, but 40 or whatever it was per month is a bit, those two combined is a bit much. Now, here's some things that I'm kind of thinking around. For this, for TV, if you really want to have, you know, some kind of TV or whatever it is, you can go out and get yourself one of those, um, they're an indoor satellite. And what you'll do is you like stick it on your window, so it and what it, and then you take the other end and you stick it in the back of your TV, and what it'll do is it'll grab over the air waves um, from some of the local channels. This is what we do, and you know you're not going to get much, but you'll probably get some basic. You know, you get news, you'll get weather, you might get a couple of comedy shows, and some overall general stations, um, just to kind of have something. All right, at least until. You know, we're out of debt and you have a fully funded emergency fund. Then you can go ahead and maybe go back to DirecTV. Now, for entertainment, um, something you could do is say you could cycle each week for, uh, like each week you could do, you know, like a, a family night. Maybe one night, you know, you could have board games or, you know, you could, you know, have like a, a tabletop kind of like, you know, board game, whatever, where you all play a game together. And then say maybe on another one, you could all watch Netflix together. You could all choose a movie or something like that. You can all go to a park or you know or go to a local farmers market whenever they do those. Uh, usually those are Tuesday nights uh, for here. All right. But this is about being more resourceful. All right. And what we'll do is we'll notice that the cash flow is now up a bit, which is good. All right. So for the debt payoff or the debt, uh, what we're going to do is use just a real simple. Uh, this is a debt snowball calculator uh, that I found online. I'll put the link to it down below in the description if you want to check it out. And what I've done is I've gone through and added all of those debts that were listed um, on the uh, spreadsheet. So they would be right here. So right here, all of these debts down here, I've listed all of these. I don't have interest rates, so unfortunately I can't uh, put those in there. All right, SL is student loan, CC is a credit card. Uh, we have some tire repairs. We have you know more student loans, a Discover card. This is a federal loan that's currently in forbearance, so there's no monthly payment yet. But I added it to the snowball just for uh, completion's sake, which creates an extra 563.44 in cash flow. So if we look back here on the actual snowball, or the you can see that I've just added all these amounts and put everything into the 16 debts all together. So we click on next. Um, you can add an extra payment, and the extra payment that we have was 563.44, which is the extra cash flow that we made from the budget before. And if we go calculate results, so it says here, all right, the, it says the principal balance is 57.11.55, which is good because that 57.11.55, so we match there, so that's good. Originally, it, said, it looks like it says it'll cost 200, 253 payments, <laughs> turned a little much. But then with the snowball, it'll be 21 payments. So what it's saying that's going to happen is, here's the payment schedule. So it lists them out. It doesn't show all of them, unfortunately. But this is what the snowball uh, calculator will show you and how many payments until you finally, come on, are debt-free down here on the bottom. All right, again, this is not showing you the whole thing, but you could probably, looks like you can download it, get the whole thing. Again, this is just one example of a snowball calculator that would tell you when to do it. But basically, this for the next 21, all right, and 21 months, that's that's less than two years. All right. Now, granted, this does not, you know, the original budget doesn't account for those sinking funds and maybe a couple other monthly expenses that were not there. So we're looking at probably around two years, all right, which is 
not too bad for $57,000. Uh, if you would like to send your budget to me and you want me to have take a look at it, and if you don't mind uh, me making a video on it to kind of use it as an example to show other people and so others can see what uh, the process that I just went through for uh, the review that I just did, uh, go ahead and I'll put a uh, link to the email address down below, but the email address is debtfreegazelle, all one word, at gmail.com. Again, I'll put a link down in the description of the email address. Send me your budget on some kind of a spreadsheet of some type and it have your income. I'll put the list of things right here. Have your income, your expenses, and any uh, debt that you might have. Uh, and please give me the uh, the full debt amounts as well as uh, the monthly payments that you have to make. Uh, family size. So just really, you know, is it just you and your spouse and a couple kids? Is it just you? The third uh, item, if you could include, is just a basic location. Um, just kind of where you are. I'm kind of assuming most of the people that are watching this are in the United States. This will really help when combined with the family size. So this way we can kind of see the different size families and different income levels depending on state. Because uh, there's definitely a difference between, uh, you know, a family of four living in New York or California, rel you know, that are taking care of kids as opposed to, say, a, a regular couple living in the, you know, the Midwest or something like that where they have no kids and maybe they have a, you know, mortgage-free home. And finally, if you are on the Dave Ramsey baby steps, uh, just let me know what baby step you're currently working on. And if you're not on the Dave Ramsey baby steps, what is your current financial goal? And then finally, and then also along with that, what is your time period of when you want to reach that? So if you are trying to save up for a down payment on a house, how much do you want? And when do you want to do it? Do you want to have it by the end of this year? Do you want to have it the end of next year? Do you want to have it in two years? Do you want to build your net worth by 20,000 in two years? Or, or maybe you're, like I said, you're on the current baby steps. Are you currently in debt and you want to have your debt payoff uh, date be within two and a half years or three years or whatever it is? Just, and it doesn't have to be exact. Just give me an idea of roughly when you want to hit that uh, financial goal. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that uh, introduction and that the first episode of this budgeting critique and review series. Uh, if you like the video, uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. It definitely helps out. And be sure to go ahead and hit the uh, subscribe button if you'd like to see more content just like this. Thanks a lot. See you later.